All right, guys, today is Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. Today marks 15 days I have left, so I have two weeks and one day to finish my car. Today's project, I am going to work on my rear seat back, which I had already blasted and painted, and then I had uh, carpet hog ringed to the, to the face of it, replacing it with burlap, basically. Carpet takes place of burlap. Uh, and then... I noticed I was going to have an issue with waviness of my springs, so I decided to uh, remove the carpet from it and go back and work on it. And then I was also having an issue mocking it up that the when you put the seat bottom in under the rear seat back and get it in place, it's squishing down the rear seat in the back real bad, and you can see it that it's squished. So I'm kind of thinking I might end up having to cut the frame and weld it, you know, like section it, take out like, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch or quarter inch or something out of the frame, just the back part, the back bar that goes across the package tray, and then weld it back together and then just touch it up with some brush paint or spray paint or something. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm in the back of the car here, and I've set the, the seat frame up in here. I lifted it up and then let it drop down. You can see the, the hooks here where it just kind of tucks in behind that a little bit. Anyway, the back of this sits on the rear deck piece here. Uh, but anyway, to lock the bottom in, you've got these tabs down here. And you basically pull like that, and it kind of kind of locks it in. And you can bend that down a little bit further to even to hold it even more. Same this side needs to be bent down just a little bit anyway, but anyway, that's the seat pretty much where it needs to be. So now I'll try to get the seat bottom and put it in here and I'll show what I show you what I mean. Try to do this one handed. Okay, so when you put a seat in on these cars, you basically you, you lift it up a little bit and then slip it up under the back. And these little wires right here, if you see this hanging thing right here, that wire, it goes in behind this brace. So this thing actually just tension sets in. It does not bolt in. So you can build brackets and bolt it in if you wanted to. But anyway, when you shove it under there at the back like that, and you just pop it down, it's odd the way they fit these cars because there's a space under here, which is kind of good because you can get your vacuum nozzle under there on your shop back. You know what I mean? What are you doing, Kiki? You want to help me put the seat in? Well, come on, man. Come on. Come on. You know, up here and help me. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is how tight this is in here, and this is why I don't like it. I'm going to end up cutting this down just a little bit to make it fit better, in my opinion, without looking squished. So, this is just the raw frame. So, when I put on... I, I'm going to take one inch foam, medium density foam, and I'm going to lay it out on a table, and then I'm going to lay this face down, and I'm going to trace this out with a Sharpie, just this outside wire frame, the part that your back would go against. And I'm going to take an electric knife, and I'm going to cut it out just a little bit wider, just a little bit wider, like maybe a quarter inch wider, all the way around. And then uh, I, I've still got to put the carpet back on here, which I'm using carpet instead of burlap. It's just what a lot of... Uh, upholstery shops do nowadays and I have carpet here I do not have burlap I feel that the carpet's quite a bit more durable I guess but it's a little bit more padded so you're just basically padding a little more but anyway I'm gonna wrap the carpet around it and hog ring it on so it'll have a rolled edge just on the outside wire frame then I'll cut the foam out and I'll put the foam on it and then I'll take half inch sew foam and I'm gonna wrap the whole thing um, I'm actually going to wrap it all the way around the seat, uh, like, you know, around where it has a soft edge. It'll help soften the edge on that that one-inch foam. You don't really need to go in there and grind a, a soft edge on that foam. Uh, it, that half-inch sew foam will soften it, and you won't even notice it. So don't do the extra work. You don't need to. Uh, but anyway, once the cover's on there, uh, you know, it'll be covered, and it should be pretty good. But what I'm trying to get to is by the time I put my carpet on here, which is kind of thick, it's going to add thickness right here going against the seat. And then when I put my uh, 
half-inch sew foam on there and the cover, uh, it's going to add more thickness to it. Now, that half-inch sew foam, you can squish it with your fingers flat, so it will squish. But with all that together, it's going to be really, really tight. And what I don't like about this, as you can see... Okay, guys, what I'm going to do here... This is going to get pretty redneck, but it'll work. So I'm trying to... I'm going to make try to get this outer, the top frame, bent up more so I don't have to cut all these wires and re-weld and all that kind of stuff. So it looks like I have a cross wire right here. Little curly Q here, then going down to that. And then over here, there's a little wire coming down into a little bend here going back up to that. There's nothing in the center except these springs themselves, and there's nothing up here at the top either. So these are really what kind of holds that frame where it's at. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the seat laying in the floor. I'm gonna take a marker and I'm just gonna draw me a little line here. Draw one here. This will wipe off with lacquer thinner or acetone or something so I ain't really worried about it. I got overspray all over the floor anyway, I don't really care. Um, anyway, that is basically, I know where to put the seat frame. You know what I mean? That That's the mark where the seat frame's got to stay. So at this point, I've put some tape here on the frame at the bottom. I'm going to take the speed square and I'm going to push it up until it touches that. And I'm going to draw a little line right, right here. So I'll do the same on the other side with the speed square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get pretty aggressive here, and I'm going to try to bend this stuff that way, like three-eighths of an inch or something like that. I still want it to touch the seat, but I don't want it squishing the, the seat like it is. So anyway, I'm going to bend on this and, and see if I can get it. And the reason I'm doing this is when this bends, when that mark on the floor is where it is on that frame on the floor when i go to stick the speed square up there if that moved that way the speed square to touch it i'll have basically a space down here to measure off of you know what i mean because right now at rest that's where it's at is my mark i drew it's resting on the seat frame so that's kind of the redneck way i'm going to do it the ends are really tight these are really hard to push up the center moves up pretty easy i mean you can see that 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 moves this area moves in pretty good, so this is not going to squish the seat as hard as what these ends are. So, let's get to it. All right, so all I did was kind of lift the seat up, and I held on to this part with my hand, and then I put my other hand up here on this, where there's a lot of wire up here, and I just pushed really, really hard. And I didn't even really feel it move. And then I come back here and I pushed on this end a little bit. So this wire uh, will bend. <clears throat> but anyway, I did it the same on both ends. And now I have it set on my marks in the floor on both sides. I had to reset it because I lifted it up to move it. And then I put the speed square down where it was. You can see the marks back here. So I actually went too far up here. Uh, but anyway, now that I've bent that, this one went too far. So I have to bend it back. This one, that's about how far I wanted to go right there. So I'm going to go back and try to bend this back down a little bit to get it there. Because I still want it to touch the seat. I don't want a gap under it. You know what I mean? But anyway, I did have to put quite a bit of tension in that uh, to get it to move. It actually looks like I bent the wire right there. I did. I bent that wire because I was holding onto that and pushing. So... I'm gonna to try to straighten this back out right here. That one stayed good, but. Anyway, so I'm gonna bend that back and then fix that wire, and then I'm gonna stick it back in the car, lock it in place, try sticking the seat under there and see what happens. Now, Ooh, 
Ooh, I think I just about got on the thing, man. I think I do. That's three eighths. Three eighths on the money, man. Huh. Hell, I'm impressed with that. And I didn't have to go through there and call them wires. I'm sure glad I didn't do that. I'd have made myself more work. It would have worked, you know, but it would have taken a lot more time. Uh, so if you're in the same position I am when you go to put your seat in, you can bend that up. I wouldn't recommend trying to bend the center. Uh, I would just bend the ends because the center is going to follow the ends. You know what I mean? That'll work. So now I'm going to mock it back up and see what happens. All right, so I tightly clamped some vice grips. That that This rod right here has a bend in it like that. So I clamped the vice grips on this side of the bend. So what I'm going to try to do, that wire is actually kind of hard to bend. I thought I was going to be able to do it by hand, but I can't. So I'm going to clamp them on, and I'm going to stick this in there. Try to man. That dude is tight, man. That little rod is a, a heck of a lot stiffer than I thought it was gonna be. Alright. That actually still needs a little more. Just kind of moving it down a little bit at a time to get it to. I know I have some pretty redneck ways of moving things and doing stuff in the floor and that kind of crap, but hey, if it works, you know what I mean? You can make fun all you want. If it works, it works, period. So anyway, it looks pretty good. We got a little bitty high spot right there. Probably it's still gonna be fine, but let's try to. I think I've been it right back where it was. Oh. Yeah, I think that happened. That'll work. It's good enough. <clears throat> okay. That's a uh... It's a lot better than it was. It's still got a little bit in it, but it ain't nothing like it was. I'll probably have to rebend that tab that's welded onto the body. So the other thing I need to do, and that's what I'm gonna do next after I find out if this fits, is I'm gonna take some of my wire and I'm gonna cut strips to go across here. And I'm gonna hog ring those wires across. And that way it helps support each one of them. And that way you don't have waves in your seat it'll have all these even and don't think when you sit down that it's going to bend that wire and it'll stay sunk in it doesn't do it it goes right back because it's spreading all the load evenly so it just goes right back but anyway i'm going to put several rows of wire across here because it is not going to be even I actually put it this way and you can see if you can see that see how this one's curved going up this one's more straight. That one's even lower than that one. So what's going to happen is, is if I go in here and just grab these wires and pull them all up and just mess with that and get them all pulled up and then get it to where it's even, the first time somebody sets in that, it, it's just going to bend them right back. So you're going to have the, the dips. So I'm still going to do that. I'm going to bend these all up even and get it nice and even. And then I'm going to put the wires across and uh, that will help keep it in place basically is what i'm telling you and again i'm not a professional upholsterer i have lots of books here uh, i've been around it a little bit my mom and dad's done upholstery in the past and i've been at other guys shops that's done upholstery just to watch and, and you know you, when you go someplace and somebody's doing something you kind of pick a little something up here and there so 
anyway, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just, <laughs> just uh, doing what I have been taught, basically. All right, I'll just put the seat back back in. Much better. Check this out. So it's not near as squished as it was. It still is a little bit. This side's really good. Look at that. Watch the watch the frame at the top when I push down on the seat. I can get my arm to stay stable there. That's me pushing on the rear seat bottom down. So this is moving. It's just when I bent the wire and bent the frame up, it's kind of relieved some of the tension so it's not squishing it so hard. But I got to tell you, I think I'm going to go further. <clears throat> I think I am. I'm going to go further. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to half inch instead of three eighths. And hell, I may take it more. Who knows? But All right. Let's start putting some support wires across here. So you could probably put them underneath or you could put them on top. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to notice it through all the foam. So I'm just going to put it on top and call it a day, pretty much. I'll start right. Very time consuming, that's for sure. All right guys, so I've got my one inch medium density foam down here and I've laid the rear seat back frame face down. So what I'm gonna do is trace out the frame. So I'll have a line to go by and I'm actually gonna cut this about a quarter inch bigger And my Sharpie quit drawing. Cut this out with an electric knife. trick with an electric knife if there is a trick to do it for the one that I have I should say uh, is go slow and steady if you try to go fast it it doesn't act like it wants to cut so uh, that's pretty much the foam there so what you're supposed to use is I think it's one and a half on your front bench seat and one inch on your rear seat, and then put half inch sew foam over, over this. So from what I have found, 
is you can cut this out. You don't have to go in and grind the edges on it to roll it, you know, to make it a smooth, soft edge. You can leave it just chopped. When you put your half inch sew foam on there, it, it makes it a soft edge. And you don't see that sharp edge of that foam because it's, it's flexible, you know what I mean? So anyway, I ended up tracing that out and now it's time to cut it out. And then I'm gonna cut it like a quarter inch wider. Just the reason is, I had done this last year. I cut this piece out. Uh, I, I've still got it in the house actually. And I cut it right to my line. And as I was cutting with the, the uh, turkey carver, electric knife, whatever you wanna call it, I actually got a little bit on the inside edge a little bit of it on the top up here. So when I spray glued the foam to the carpet that I'm putting on here to replace burlap, uh, you could see it going across the top of the seat and it had a little dip in it. So instead of cutting out a sliver of foam and spray gluing it to it and trying to shape it and form it, I had extra foam, so I'm just gonna cut it out and roll with it. So just make a new one, basically. So anyway, that's why I'm going a quarter inch wider this time, and it'll give me some uh, comfort room, we'll say. So anyway, I'm going to get the knife set up and get ready to do some cutting. All right, so I got the knife plugged in, and uh, this is just one from Walmart. Uh, it says Hamilton Beach, uh, but this thing is it's pretty old. I actually bought this just to do foam, so <laughs> this is not the one out of the kitchen. But anyway, so I'm just going to, what I did was I laid it on the frame and the wire part of the frame is kind of back in here. So I'm not gonna get the knife blade into the metal wire. <clears throat> anyway, let's get started. So I'm gonna cut it out just a little bit on the wide side. Foam is very expensive, I might add. You know what, I better put my microphone on. I just realized I didn't have it all hooked up, so hold that thought. All right, here we go. So I got my uh, microphone on here, which should make a huge difference. I have been asked before about my microphone setup, and it is, uh, the brand is Boya, B-O-Y-A, and it, uh, it basically hooks up to the GoPro and you you do have a wire, but it's just from this box to the microphone uh, So it is uh, Wireless kind of so you're not actually connected to the GoPro and have a real long wire uh, And the microphone has a little foam cover on it to help with wind noise and stuff What I found out when the first time I used it I put it right underneath my chin and it was picking up my breath so uh, I started clamping it pretty far down on the shirt so it it still picks up very well and it's a it, it's a pretty simple setup I will will say if you buy the kit to use it'll come with two little cables and they look the same but one of them won't work when you plug everything in it just won't work and then you check the other cable and it works so it must be the way the other cables designed or something I, I don't know but anyway it's from Amazon and I want to say it was like 60 bucks or something. I don't remember. All right, here we go. Let's chop off some fingers. All right, so I'm going to hog ring this carpet back on here. And I basically just, it's it's a carpet, it doesn't have a, ba a backing, like a plastic backing on it, like molded car foam, or car cover, uh, car carpet is, uh, automotive carpet that's pre-molded, I'll say. Uh, this is just, it's a universal carpet that I get at my uh, automotive upholstery supply, and it's like for boats and RVs and just whatever. So uh, anyway, this stuff, it, it's a little bit thicker, uh, so it's a little bit more durable than the burlap. But 
Anyway, a lot of the uh, upholstery guys are now using this instead of burlap. And I, I don't like the smell of burlap, so... Get it back on there where I had it to begin with. Okay, that's about it right there. Alright, I'm going to put a glove on because I've already got blisters on my hands from using these hog ring pliers. And when you're, you don't do this for a living, you're going to have some pretty soft hands, you know what I mean? So I got the carpet hog ringed on, stretched it back pretty tight, and anyway, it's all done. So then I laid my foam on here, and on the bottom of the seat, I'm putting this right at the bottom of the wire, like right at it. Now when I cut this out bigger, I wanted a little bit of overhang over the top. Um, just because last time I cut it right with the wire and then I had that dip in there, so I wanted a little bit of wiggle room, basically. Uh, so anyway, once I get this placed on here where I want it and I'm happy with it, I'm going to put my hand on right there and I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to take 3M High Strength 90 that I get at Lowe's. I think it's like 20 bucks or something. This is what I like. Uh, it works really good. And I'm going to spray this half of the foam and this half of the carpet and I'm going to let it set about a minute or so and then I'm going to lay it down and you know run my hand over a little bit make sure it's good and stuck. And then you know, do that number, and then rub it down, make sure it's good, and then I'll do the same thing and pull it this way. That way, you know, keeping my hand on here allows this not to shift or move and get out of place. So, anyway, after this foam's glued on, then I'm going to get the half-inch sew foam and come out and cut it out with scissors uh, to where it overhangs, and I'm going to wrap it all over the top and around the back under here and hog ring it on. And that is going to sm smooth the edges, give it a nice soft rolled edge. So lots of work. And then after that half inch sew foam's on, it's time for a seat cover. All right, so I've already glued the other side, and I just got done shooting this this area here and on the foam. You don't have to do the entire thing. Just do an area in the center because you don't want your foam shifting like over time, people getting in and out, the foam might try to shift and your cover will end up moving one direction or something. So anyway, as, as usual with contact adhesive, contact adhesive means you spray both parts and then when it comes in contact with each other, that's what makes it stick. So don't just spray one side. <clears throat> Okay, I'm happy with that. So now if you, you weren't happy with the way the foam is, like if you've got lots of area of the foam that's sticking way out or something more than the other, you can take your roll lock disc and you know smooth those edges off or flatten them off, square them off, whatever you need to do. Um, anyway, I've got 
I've got this about where I want it, so I think it's good to go. I've got uh, this end right here, this little corner. The way that wire is made, it has a kick out in it on those very ends. This side's a lot more sharp than that side, so I'm going to go ahead and work that over a little bit. Just not happy with it. this other end here. Okay. Well, at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the half-inch sew foam on. So, in case you're wondering why I'm doing this in the floor, because it bugs some people, they, they just don't understand why I'm always in the floor. So I've never had a space big enough that I could have tables and workbenches and stuff to work on. I'm in a two-car garage that's connected to my house, but it's pretty small. If you get two cars in here, you can't open the door to get out. So anyway, I've just always worked on the floor since I was a kid. That's uh, just what I've always done. Um, but anyway, I, I do have another small fold-out table that was here yesterday. but. Uh, it iced today, so uh, my wife's home from, from work, and she has her laptop from work, so she's working from home. So she needs that table in there to sit at, so she can, you know, sit on the couch. <clears throat> yes, we do have a computer table and a computer chair, but she has still has that blood clot, and uh, it's in her, behind her knee, so... Uh, that couch is a lot more comfortable for her to sit in. So, I will give up my table gladly uh, as long as she's comfortable. I can work in the floor because I always do anyway. Alright, so here's the half inch sew foam. Uh, it sucks not having a lot of room to do this in, but Anyway, this half-inch sew foam is, it, it'll squish. Like, it, you can flatten it with your finger, it doesn't take much. But, the, the, it has a backing on it, and that's what, when you clip a hog, hog ring through that, that's what makes it hold. If it didn't have that backing on there, it was just foam, the hog ring would just tear right through it. So, the sew foam is what you need. But, anyway, I've got, I don't know, that much foam hanging out of there. I just... It's probably a little too much. I could probably thin it down a little bit, but I'm, I'm good with it. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to basically roll that under the top side of the springs and over that one-inch foam that I already put on there and hog ring it to the springs under there all the way around. So what that does is it softens the edge, and you get another half-inch of padding. So... Anyway, that's what I'm going to do there, and then I'll take some more foam and put on the back bar back here and wrap it around the back, and then that way the cover has a nice soft edge on it as well instead of just being on the metal frame itself. <clears throat> but anyway, that uh, I, I didn't go back and, and you know take the grinder and soften the edge on the one-inch foam because you don't really need to. Now, if you had dense foam, you probably would, but the medium density, you don't need to. It'll soften that edge and make it a nice roll. You don't feel that, that edge under there from that one inch foam. So, anyway, I'm, I'm literally probably 30 minutes away from putting a seat cover on this seat. All right, I trimmed it off with scissors. You could use a razor blade or whatever. <clears throat> I just cut it off with scissors. Scissors tend to make a, a choppy edge, but I don't care because it's getting wrapped underneath it anyway.
the corners do get a little tough and you can split it and slice it and all that if you want. I don't. I just kind of wad it up in there. It doesn't really matter. I might cut a little bit of that off, I guess. So the cover is going to stretch over this foam edge up to here. So this up in here, you're not going to see it. It doesn't really matter. And I did not spray glue the sew foam to the one inch foam. I'm going to let that float. <clears throat> So I put a quarter inch sew foam on the metal frame piece right here. I spray glued the back back here and then I come up here and spray glued the front and then I cut a piece about, I don't know, three inches wide and just split the difference and folded it over. So now the seat cover when it goes over this has a, a little soft edge here. I was originally going to do half inch sew foam but uh, I thought it'd be best to do quarter inch since this goes across the rear deck back there, that rear deck, the package tray I made basically. So now it's pretty much ready for a cover. So I am going to get going on that. I'm going to clean off the foam a little bit up here where I've been rolling around on the floor. I did clean up my floor before I started, but it's still a little bit dirty. So I'm just trying to line up the seam at the top with the like the center of the roll up there on the top edge.
so you can already kind of get the idea of how it's gonna gonna fit just kind of placing it on here so if you've ever seen videos of upholstery guys doing this uh, they're trying to work the cover one way or the other so there's gonna be a lot of that going on here in a few minutes when I go to get this cover wrapped around there so right now I'm just kind of checking it over to see if it looks like it's gonna work okay I kind of got the the cover about where I want it kind of so what I used is I've got a brand new wire uh, that I got at the upholstery supply and it has it's basically a covered wire and it's almost like paper sack brown material on it and it's actually a pretty flimsy wire it's kind of thin so the listing that they sewed into this cover is one continuous listing so before I stretched it up over the top of this it was just down here and I fed that wire through there all the way around so it's one continuous wire all the way around and this bends really easy like it bends real easy so when I get on this hard top rear seat over here a sedan you don't have to worry about it for sure but on a hard top it has a little notch in it right here for your rear armrest this is kind of going to be a little bit of a tough area for me but anyway this wire will bend basically is what I'm telling you anyway I've fed the wire through and I've got about the same distance left over hanging out I'm not going to cut any of these yet I'm going to wait until it, it's pretty much almost done and then I will trim them off with some tin snips or my fence cutters over there but anyway I did the same thing I had a piece here and I fed it through on the bottom listing it's just one long continuous straight piece and uh, anyway now on the hard top seat it has this extension square framing coming down right here that's the part that locks into your tabs in the body but your cover will go to the the one long continuous wire all the way across so this is going to go to this so if you're having trouble getting it up there have somebody push down on the back of the seat with it face down you can push down on it or whatever uh, i don't have anybody help me so i'm just going to do it one at a time like that and hold it and hog ring it <clears throat> but anyway after i got the wire fed through then i pulled it up over the back of this part right here and where the seam is I put the seam exactly on the corner on both sides so uh, anyway I've got about the same distance of vinyl showing uh, to the duck cloth there so at this point what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hog ring the center now I'm only gonna put a few hog rings up here because most likely I will have to take them back out you do have to you know take apart and put together a couple of times so I'm gonna pull this around and you can see the oval cutouts in this frame on the back side right here and that's where your hog rings go so I'm gonna put a couple in it across back here and then I'm probably gonna hog ring the bottom a few of those as well and then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna look at it and see if I like it or not so anyway this is the the, the hard top rear seat is, is going to be tough because it has this kick in it for them armrests. A sedan rear seat like a two-door post or a four-door post is going to be pretty simple, man. <laughs> so uh, anyway, this uh, it, it should end up working out. And I mean, I know it's not going to be perfect because, you know, I'm doing the work myself and uh, somebody else stitched the cover. So all right, so I went ahead and hog ring the bottom and the top and I've got I turned it over to just kind of check everything over and it's looking pretty good but I can tell I'm probably gonna have a little bit of stuffing to do on the on the ends so anyway I'll hop this up here so you can see so that is pretty much now keep in mind the sides aren't hooked yet so I've got wrinkles up here when I go to hog ring in this and stuff it should uh, pull out of there but I mean that's pretty decent this uh, Alante is very very stretchy so um, it's I, I, lo I love the stuff it, it looks and feels like leather but anyway it's it, it's pretty tight it's not super tight but it's tight 
So, at this point, I need to check and see where my seam is on my corners over here. And this is the part where you got to kind of, you know, slap it and work it one way or the other and, and do that kind of stuff. Now, if you ever put a seat cover on and you notice you've got wrinkles like up here and there's a wrinkle, you just need to take your hog ring out and grab it and pull straight and uh, it'll take care of it. Sometimes you can do it, with, get rid of it with a heat gun, but I just pull the hog ring out and re hog ring it. Now I'm going to show you something here and <clears throat> so up here on the top on this seat in particular it has oval slots in it that are about I don't know three quarters of an inch wide so when I was putting the hog rings in I put them in dead center of that oval hole I didn't get it off to one side the reason is if you have to work that seat cover one way or the other you're going to have a little bit of room for that to to move. So put those in the center and also pay attention to your sewn, your, your stitching right here. Try not to run your hog ring through your stitching. So put it on that side of it. Because if you cut through the stitching it can unravel. Now on the bottom of this seat, because I'm holding the seat upside down, this is the bottom. It doesn't have oval slots in a plate. It's just this wire all the way across. Don't hog ring it to this part on a hard top. That is the part where your clamp holds it down. So anyway, I just I, I grabbed the center and I pulled it up and put I just put a few in there. Now when you when you put just a few in here, when you get to looking at it from this angle, which you're really not going to see once it's in the car, but see how it kind of does this number. So when I go back and put a hog ring in here and here, see how it already straightened it. I'm just I put a few in first just to make sure the cover is going to fit and. Just in case I don't have to pull it back apart, I don't want to have to cut apart 50 hog rings. I'd rather do 20, you know what I mean? I'd rather not do any, but you, uh, you get what I'm saying. So I don't think I need to take the cover back off, so I will probably say, be safe enough to go ahead and put more on the bottom because it's dead centered in this frame. Um, and I put them all in down there. The, uh, the top is the first thing I did. I hog ringed that, but I pulled the center first. Just remember when you're pulling that cover to pull straight. Don't pull at an angle and hog ring it because when you let go of it, it's going to have a wrinkle in it sideways. Uh, it's just make sure you do it straight. And uh, like up here on the wire, uh, you can kind of see I've got the center bar right here. I put the hog ring over from it. Same thing here, same thing there. I've got space in case I need to move that cover. Had I have hog ringed right up there against the edge of that, that cover wouldn't be able to move any. So. I would end up having to pull the, cut the hog ring out and put another one in. So I do believe this is going to work out. It's just I know the sides are going to be tough. And I'm going to. All right. So I got the seat in. It turned out pretty awesome. So I'm really happy with it. I'll show you around the back window here in a minute. But. It, it's even across the back. It's not all humpy and lumpy, so I'm really happy. It uh, it's touching. It's touching the bottom of the seat back. Now, if I wouldn't have bent that frame, the outer frame up, and just hog ringed it on, when I put this cover in, like the seat bottom in under there, and then pushed it down, it would have it would have squished this up and it would have had a big wrinkle right here all the way across where it had been bunched up. So, man, what a job, let me tell you. That was a, that was a lot of work. <clears throat> but I'm happy with it, it turned out really good. So, I need to heat gun a couple of spots. I need to heat gun the top corners up here and I need to heat gun right in here on all four spots, but I am done for tonight. I am ready to go in and eat some dinner. I'm, uh, whoo, I've had enough, uh, for the, for, of this seat for today, I'll say. I need to go ahead and finish, uh, my other panel here for this side. And then I need to wrap my lower armrests, which I had those pre sewn as well when I had the seat covers done. Um, and then I can put, all of the back half of the car together. I can put the garnish moldings on. I can put my window cranks in and the whole back of the car will be done. So if only it was as easy as it was to say that, you know what I mean? 
But I'm happy with it, man. It, it looks good. <clears throat> That's what it looks like across the back. Wow, this window's dirty. It looks like there's a wrinkle right there, but it's a shadow from the light here. I'll just unplug it. You really can't see nothing now. It's too dark. When I first looked in there, all I was like, oh no, that's a wrinkle. But it goes all the way across, so it just it looks good, man. I'm really happy with the package tray I made because it contours the the rubber seal from the back glass perfectly all the way around like you can't see in between them like it's perfectly butted up against it man oh man I can live with that man so in case you haven't seen any of the older videos this is a pre-sewn well Ciadella made the seat cover set for me I had to pay for it this they're not sponsors I had to pay for this this gray straw cloth right here is what this is called. This is straight off my trim tag. This is what this car originally had, but I had them change it to black instead of the coral color because my car was originally coral and gray. So I went with black and gray. And uh, anyway, this is the factory 55 Bel Air stitching in the seat with that little bitty brow in there. That is factory for a Bel Air. So. Anyway, it's pretty much going to be an original replacement interior. I just changed the blunt to black, basically. It's going to have the original armrests, uh, front and rear, uh, the same design as factory with the stainless steel trim and everything on the door panel. It's just going to look like an original interior. And the best part about that, having an original interior is it won't ever be dated and it won't ever go out of style. So play off of original and it'll always look good in my opinion but anyway guys that is enough for today thanks for watching